So when we configured our MIIM DC001 and then the DSK001, we set both network adapters to NAT, network address translation, so that it would use and share the host IP so that both virtual machines had access to the internet so we could do all of our updates and have them fully up to date. Now what we wanna do is shift them off of our primary network and allow the machines to talk to each other through a virtual network of their own. So let's take a look at these settings. Now, first of all, we have bridged, NAT, and host only. So let me go ahead and drag that off here real quick. I'll close it down. And we're going to go into up here to edit and virtual network editor. Now, as we open up the virtual network editor, uh, if it opens up for you and gives a message down here, just open it with administrative privileges, and that's what I've done. So we see that VNet0 is that bridged, here's the host and here's the NAT. I'm going to go ahead and add a network, and I'll just use VMNet2 and I'll say OK. So it's going to go ahead and assign some IP addressing to uh, VMNet2. And DHCP within Windows Server in a virtual environment like this, like a test environment, can be a challenge. So what I'm going to do is allow my network editor, you know, basically um, to handle DHCP for me. So I'm going to use local DHCP service to distribute IP addresses. Now what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to change the scope here. Okay, so I'm going to change the scope 100 to 150. OK, I'll never have more than that. And I think I'll go ahead and change this default, although you know, I, I, I won't leave all these virtual machines on. It's my test environment. I'll give it a seven day max lease time with an eight hour default lease time. And if you notice, I've got 50 IP addresses that it's going to go ahead and give out. So I'll say OK. It's going to be on a 192.168.216.0. So write that down. Remember that. So we'll say OK. Now at this point, what I need to do once it updates, gets the DHCP server running, etc., is come back in here and apply a different network adapter. So now I'm going to choose custom, and I'm going to choose the one that we just configured, that VM Net 2. So once I do that, whoops, I just hit OK. I'll go in and do that again with the network adapter. For my second device. So now they're both VNet2. Now at this point, they're ready to talk to each other and we're ready to begin the process of promoting our domain controller to an Active Directory domain controller. We'll do that in the next step.